The objective here is to learn about fiber over ethernet and I'm not sure this picture uh, really applies yet because I just Google imaged it and it was one of the first ones that popped up and I liked it. But according to the first sentence here in our resource, it um, is looking pretty good. The resource we're using today is webopedia.com. Looks like people abbreviate fiber channel over ethernet. I should um, indicate that I'm talking about a channel here. So fiber channel over ethernet is F-C-O-E, F-C-O maybe, the cool kids pronounce it that way. Well, fiber channel over ethernet solves the problem of organizations having to run parallel network infrastructures for their local area networks and their storage area networks. See what I mean? Here's a LAN, here's two storage things. So far, so good. So, as a result, they have to operate separate switches, host bus adapters, HBAs. Oh, make sure you know your acronym, especially if you're going to take one of these CompTIA tests. So what does HBA stand for? The answer is a host bus adapter. So as a result, they have to operate separate switches, um, HBAs, NICs, and cables for each of these networks. Even utilizing a virtualization solution like VMware can actually increase the number of network adapters required to carry traffic out of the servers. So FCO reduces cards and cabling. So what's the point of FCO? To reduce cards and cabling, I assume. Webopedia says with so many NICs, HBAs, switches, and cables to deal with, both capital and operational costs to run a data center can increase significantly. FCO E represents a way to drastically reduce the number of cards, switches, adapters, and assorted cabling by running LANs and SANs over the same infrastructure. According to analyst firm Enterprise Strategy Group, ESG, um, FCO works out considerably cheaper to deploy than traditional networks due to reduced hardware costs. So I assume it adds up after a while, and probably depending on the size of your organization. To look at it another way, FCO is a standard for using fiber channel protocol, which is the mainstay of the SAN, over Ethernet networks, the mainstay of the computer networks, both wired and wireless. So FCO provides a way to transport FC SAN traffic over Ethernet, eliminating the need for a separate storage network. So at the end of the day, FCO is a standard and what makes it so fancy is that SAN traffic can go over Ethernet, which it normally had not. What does uh, SAN stand for again? Storage area networks. So storage area networks were using fiber channel. Regular like LAN networks had used um, Ethernet, whether they were doing it wirelessly or wired. So who's giving in to who here is the question. So how about I put the question in these words? What protocol is the SAN traffic using now? Ethernet. What did it use before? Fiber channel. Well, in the next section of the paper, it says fiber channel meets Ethernet. And so thank you. To understand FCO, it is important to grasp the two key definitions that form the term fiber channel and Ethernet. So here's the money maker right here for our understanding. Fiber channel is a serial data transfer protocol and standard for high speed enterprise grade storage networking. It supports data rates up to 10 gigabits per second and delivers storage data over fast opti optical networks. Basically, FC is the language through which storage devices such as HPAs, switches, and controllers can communicate. How about I just ask, what is a key feature of using fiber channel? And I would say it's these data rates, really high, 10 gigabits per second. And of course, over optical networks, so fiber, if you don't know much about it, I have videos on it, but it is light, which is faster than using radio waves or knocking electrons out of their orbits in copper cabling. Fiber optics is pretty cool. Well, for Ethernet, this is an architecture developed almost 40 years ago for LANs. In its early days, it supported up to 10 megabits. See how much slower that is? Ah, but that's in the early days. My bad. Um, it says, however, recently this has been extended to 1 gigabit per second, 10 gigabits per second, and more. All right, so that 10 gigabits over here, it looks like um, we found a way to make Ethernet tie fiber optics. And when this protocol is being used, um, you'll probably recognize the term frames. 
And so just to get everybody a little bit better with um, understanding data transfer rates, how about this question? What are the top speeds of FC and Ethernet in the context of this article only? And you only need one answer, because that one answer, according to the article, or at least in the context of the article, the 10 gigabits per second is the highest number for both of them. So after you're done answering that, let's go down here to FCO technology. This is basically a way to map fiber channel over duplex Ethernet networks based on the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, also known as the IEEE. And they're doing this using the 802.3 standard. As well as considering I.O., it is an effective way of reducing complexity by eliminating the necessity of establishing and running parallel networks for storage and networking. Okay, that goes back to the article of um, what is the point of FCO, and that is to reduce cabling. Was there another one? Oh, cards and cabling. So we could be talking about HBAs or and or switches and NICs. Suppose it boils down to the network engineer's decisions they make when they are engineering. Now the technology can be deployed in a top of the rack configuration. An FCO enabled switch sits at the top of the rack and takes a place of fiber channel switch and an ethernet switch. This configuration would assume the use of converged network adapters or a universal LAN on motherboard that is capable of supporting FCO. So I would ask what do the acronym CNA and LOM stand for? That is converged network adapters and LAN on motherboard. I bet I can make separate videos for both those terms. But just to focus on this article, it warranted redundant connections. Whoops, if warranted, not it, but if warranted, so if need be, redundant connections can be established using at least two FCO connections for each server to the top of the rack. This would take the place of two fiber channel and two ethernet connections per server for redundancy purposes. And the top of the switch, the rack switch, would then end the ethernet, ethernet traffic to the LAN and the fiber channel traffic to the SAN. All right, I really need to see a picture of this, but let's finish the paragraphs. As well as top of rack switches, FCO is also available in other formats such as blades that plug into the storage backbone. And at the server level, CNAs for FCO can replace FC, HBAs, and Ethernet NICs along with associated cabling, and both protocols can be supported on the same port in terms of the overall network stack. So FCO routes fiber channel traffic at the link layer and also uses the Ethernet to transmit the FC protocol. There's a lot to unpack in that paragraph. So let's keep it simple with this question. At what layer is fiber channel traffic routed? And it says it right here. Fiber channel over Ethernet routes fiber channel traffic at the link layer. Now you may have heard of convergence before. The word is pretty uh, fancy sounding, but the concept is really simple. The way I think of convergence is just all the different types of data are on a single, converged onto a single wire. You could have um, internet, uh, HTML, you could have voice, you can have videos, you can have everything just on that one wire. They say here that formerly telecom utilized one network to carry phone lines and another line for computerized data traffic. This has converged using voice over internet protocol, VoIP, as a means of cutting down the network clutter and unifying traffic. The same basic trend is now beginning to take effect in storage, where more and more hardware can accommodate converged networks. Servers, for example, are available with universal connectivity adapters that are able to handle almost any Ethernet-based protocol, either via chips on the motherboard or through adapter cards. Eventually, storage networks may converge completely with Ethernet, but for now, both converged and dedicated storage networks remain widely... Oh no, that is the end of the sentence. What a horrible sentence. But for now, both converged and dedicated storage networks remain widely. First of all, never start a sentence with but. Second of all, you could just um, have ended by subtracting widely. Okay, anyways, thanks for the article. That was very informative. I can click next, or I could go to these related links. As I scroll down, I didn't see anything else interesting. Um, here is the little copyright 2019. But that's it for this video. We got eight pretty solid questions to better wrap our minds around fiber channel over Ethernet.